What's happening, guys? Keith here with another edition of the Impact Report. So we don't have too much news this week, which is generally a good thing in the world of Impact Wrestling, considering the fact that a lot of the news, more recently than not, has been negative rather than positive, considering all the people leaving the company. But with people leaving the company, new people have to come in. So before we get on to anything else, I just want to let you guys know, if you want to check out this past week's Impact Wrestling Review, you can click the link above me. It'll actually be there this time. Um, but yeah, let's get into things. So, Friday night, we had WrestlePro Brace for Impact streamed on Twitch. Um, overall, it was a decent show, I thought. Um, of course, there's going to be th some things that I dislike and liked. This was the first show they're, they've streamed on Twitch as a partner of another promotion. Uh, they constantly had over a thousand viewers, so that was good. Unfortunately, they were up against the Ring of Honor show, which was being streamed, I believe, on their website, along with Facebook Watch and I think another outlet. So that was not in their favor, along with being the opening night of the Olympics. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll talk about some of the things that I didn't care for, like the, the camera was a little shaky and jumpy. The arena was a little dark. There was apparently over a thousand people there because I saw pictures online of it. But looking, if you were looking just from our perspective, looking at the television or computer screen, you could not tell there were that many people there. Um, the ring seemed extremely small. I know a lot of promotions use different size rings, as this one was probably a 16 by 16 ring. I believe Impact used an 18 by 18. Um, and some of the matches weren't that great, like the opening six-man tag wasn't very good, the mixed tag match wasn't that good as well, or intergender, I think that's how they played it. Um, and what a lot of people were looking forward to was uh, Tennille Dashwood appearing on the show, which she main evented the actual show, but they did not show it here. I, I'm guessing this is because I don't think either of the two participants in the match were contracted performers by impact um and she ended up showing up on the ring of honor stream inserting herself into the women of honor tournament so that, that that was about it oh oh there was one thing that colby covington segment that that was not very good but i i get why he did it because he still wants this this title match but of course there were some br bright spots um, we got a commentary team of josh matthews and scott demore they were pretty good they worked well together um, it was nice to hear Demore back on commentary. Uh, we did get a couple good matches. There was a triple threat with Eli Drake versus Matt McIntosh versus Anthony Bowens. Uh, both McIntosh and Bowens uh, impressed me in the ring. Definitely two guys. If I was there scouting, I would be interested in. Uh, the Falaba versus Alberto El Patron match was actually pretty good. Um, as was the main event, which we saw Johnny Impact versus Dan Maff. Um, yeah, and then we did get another match as well that was good because we saw the return of Teddy Hart, who he replaced uh, Eddie Edwards in his match versus Bobby Wayward. Eddie Edwards, uh, like everybody knows, well, I guess everybody doesn't know because it technically didn't happen yet. Um, he was injured at the hands of Sammy Callahan in a mistake uh, spot with a baseball bat. So, yeah, that match was decent as well. Um, an odd ending, very abrupt, but, but an overall good match. Um, and it was announced that Teddy Hart would also be appearing on the Impact Wrestling WrestleCon event. Um, Teddy Hart had wrestled for TNA back in the Asylum days, and uh, while he is a very good in-ring worker, he has had his share of issues, well, with promotions and outside the ring. But I think this time around, he's looking to... Uh, change those thoughts about him uh we also have our first match announced for the destiny and bcw presents impact wrestling live road show on march 4th uh which will also be taped for twitch uh that match is trevor lee versus josh alexander they're hyping this one up as a match that could steal the show so we did have an injury this past week uh rosemary was reportedly injured at a show last weekend in a match with jessica havoc uh, no word on the severity of it, but it was said that she was unable to put weight on her knee, fearing that she had suffered a knee injury. Uh, Rosemary took to Twitter and wrote, We've been quiet on the situation, but know that we appreciate all the energy the Hive has been putting forth toward our welfare. These mortal meat suits are regrettably fragile through nobody's fault but unlucky chance. When we have more answers, we will share them. So 
That is unfortunate. So Austin Aries was on this week's Impact teleconference. Um, he represented the company well, and he had a very important quote, and I think, you know, Definitely resonates with a lot of people out there. He said, with all the previous reboots that Impact Wrestling has had, people are skeptical that this new phase isn't any different. What I hope people understand is that for me to come back to this company, and I've been here or there through different regime changes and I've had my trials and tribulations, for me to come back here now should signal that things are different. So that's definitely a positive message to people who have had the perceived thought that this is just the same old Impact Wrestling. Uh, definitely worth a listen. Like I said, uh, Aries represents the company well, and it's available all over YouTube. I think uh, the Impact Lounge said they were going to upload it today. There was also a Newsweek article called Bracing for Impact Wrestling. Once the world's number two company, 2018 is critical to its survival. Another article definitely worth checking out. Uh, we get to look at Nordholm's first year with the company, his working relationship with Jeff Jarrett, how things went south, uh, what happened with Rebby Hardy, and departures in the company and their plans for 2018. If you guys want, I'll send a link at the bottom. Uh, so this week's impact drew 294,000 viewers. We're a little down from last week. I think they had 319,000, but ranked 123 on Cable's top 150. Uh, this was up against the Duke versus North Carolina game, and it was the first night of the Winter Olympics, so... A lot of eyes on those games, uh, the Olympics, and the, the other game, which I think drew over 2 million. But we're still moving in the right direction. This week was kind of a down week anyway. There was nothing huge going on, really. Next week, we get the title rematch and uh, a couple other matches. I mean, I think Impact needs to do a little better job of hyping on social media, but that's just me. And last but not least, uh, next week... Impact. We will see the debut of Ryan Cage. Um, I am very excited about his debut. He was definitely one of the ones or one of the wrestlers that I was hoping Impact would sign and was very happy that they did. Um, if you guys haven't seen any of his work, you can either check out his stuff in Lucha Underground, but I would recommend his match against Nakajima from Pro Wrestling Noah's uh, Summer Navigation 2017. The match got four and three quarter stars. It was just an excellent match, and you can see how well he works as, well, an all-around great wrestler. But that is all I have for you guys. I will see you next week for my Impact Wrestling review, and then next weekend for the Impact Report. So until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.